Shalom, Austin. Most High Christ bless. Shalom, Most High Christ bless. Why did you join IUIC? Well, I joined IUIC because I saw men of God that was actually keeping the commandments as it is written in the Bible. I've never seen that day, day in my life, ever. So when I saw that, I knew that it was something different about this, this, uh, this group that I was looking at, which was actually the only group I ever looked at. I actually been congregating since 2014 of June. Yeah. What made you decide to look for the Most High? Well, you know, I always had, um, I was always on a spiritual journey. Never was in any, any other denomination except Christianity. But before Christianity, I was just all, I used to pray anyway. Had no understanding about the Bible, had no knowledge of the scriptures, none of that. But I used to see my father pray, my dad pray, and uh, I would pray. And I knew it had to be a higher being, didn't know what it looked like, who it was. And uh, ran the streets, and the streets got the best of me. So I knew Christianity was phony, but I tried it. Had no other outlet, so I didn't. I combed the streets of Chicago, west side, south side, north side. Never seen nobody teaching anything on the street ever. You may see the Jehovah Witnesses, you may see, you know, people like that, but I never seen no, no camp, no nothing. I was born and raised in the city, but um, I tried Christianity. It was fake. It was phony. So one day I, uh, I had missed a Sunday. I was, and this is, uh, I was already seven years in. Just going along with the flow. And I missed a Sunday and I felt bad about it. Couldn't even explain, didn't even know why. Couldn't even explain why I felt bad. So something, I don't know what it was, just told me, uh, look up who are the real Jews. So I went on YouTube and I typed in, who are the real Jews? To this day, I don't know where they came from, but I just typed it in. First video popped up was a video of some brothers who happen to be captains to this day. Uh, Captain, uh, Captain, jo uh, jo uh, I'm bad with names. Jo jo Joel, Captain Joel and Captain Yan. They was doing somewhat of a classroom setting. Uh, I think it was the Black and Hispanic Club Heritage or something like that. And they had visuals. They had like a um, the projector screen along with the Bible reading out of the scriptures. They had artifacts. And when I saw that, I was stuck. I was stuck because I had my Bible out and everything. So I watched that video, I was glued. It was a decent, nice, lengthy video. Watched it. And then after I watched it, I watched it again. But this time I watched it with notes. And I was pausing and playing and writing. Pausing, playing and writing. And, and I was like, damn, what they saying is actually in the Bible. That blew my mind. I was gone. I was gone from that moment. So after I watched it that time, I watched that video for a week straight. Meditated on it. Because remember, I was in Christianity, so I'm trying to really process this, what I'm seeing, what I'm hearing. And uh, after a week, everybody in my family thought I was bugged out. Because I, uh, I was ordering fringes from places I never even heard of, you know. I was ordering fringes. I was, uh, you know, getting rid of stuff that wasn't 100%. Uh, and then I finally, uh, I, wrote, I wrote an email to uh, the bishop, Bishop Nathaniel. I don't know if you remember it, but I wrote an email to Bishop Nathaniel. And... I was I was anxious, and I didn't get the I didn't get a response right away. So I wrote it. I wrote another one right after that. And this, the other email I wrote was kind of like, kind of like niggerish because I was like, "Look, man, I'm trying to find out, you know, we, you know, where y'all located that, whatever." So he instantly replied. He said, "He said, Shalom, brother, calm down. Where are you located?" And I was like, "Oh, praise the answer." So I stayed in Chicago. And he said, "Good, we got brothers. You know, man, we got brothers in Chicago. Check this uh, number out." So I get the number. I call the number. And uh, it goes on the website and see that it, all the number matches it, what he gave me. It had uh, uh, I think Captain Ramya, Officer Gabriel, but I didn't get no answer. So now, now I'm kind of still anxious, like man. So I left a voicemail. I left voicemails. Got a call back. Uh, on the phone was a voice that was deep. I'm like, damn, who's this brother I'm talking to? Well, uh, uh, the person on the phone asked direct questions, straight direct questions. Straight to the point. And I was like, man, this is what I'm talking about. And uh, I was anxious to come in, but it was a process during that time. During that time, you was not allowed to congregate until you have been learning online for at least three months. I think that's what it was. So I was kind of like, damn, man, you know what I'm saying? So uh, I was learning online for three months, but during that three-month period, I had to watch all their videos 
took a lot of notes. I had like three notebooks full of just notes, you know what I mean? And so when I finally got a chance to come in, Congate finally, uh, first, well, right before I came in, Officer Gabriel had uh, told me to meet him at a Chicago Public Library. Met him there, uh, uh, explained who I was, my whole little story, how I found him. And then uh, he said, okay, cool, all right. Uh, I want you to meet me at uh, next week around this time. He gave me an address. It was a text house where uh, they, I, I, uh, apparently they buy their fringes from. So he told me to bring, bring about five shirts with you when I meet him. So next week I brought like five shirts, met him at this textile st uh, store and gave him the shirts. I forgot I had them in a bag. In that bag, I had, a, I had like some uh, uh, decent fragrance, like an expensive fragrance. That was just a gift that I was giving the officer, you know, for, uh, you know, having me come in and fringe my shirts. And then uh, we parted ways. And, uh, he, he got home, I got home. I got a phone call, he said, hey, yo, uh, you left something in the bag. He said, yeah, I think uh, you, you, you left some. I said, no, that, uh, that's a gift for me to you because you didn't have to fringe my shirts. He said, all oh, praise, man, thank you. I appreciate that, that's very charitable. And so he called me like a couple days later. He gave me his address, his house. He said, your shirts are ready. I said, oh, cool. Can you pick my shirts up? We sat, we, ch we chatted. He didn't, they didn't charge me nothing. And I thought that was amazing. Five shirts, fringed up, bought up blue, didn't get charged a penny. So um, that, that following, that, that following uh, Sabbath, I was congregating. And I gotta say, that, my, that being my first experience amongst the body, and it wasn't, it wasn't many people. It was like maybe four brothers and like maybe five sisters. And uh, the way they had it set up, it was a lot of order. You know, you had a reader, you had a teacher, you had a lot of, you know, they had a precept sheet, welcome home packet. And then like, uh, as time went on, uh, th that day, sisters came out of the kitchen with trays of food and like, with smiling and saluting. That was different to me. I never seen nothing like that. You know, I'm used to, I'm, I'm more fresh out the world. I'm used to going to barbecues and, you know, help yourself, fix your own plate. But when they were serving and smiling, that blew my mind. I was like, this is different. So that's pretty much like my first experience. What scripture sealed the deal for me to walk in truth? The scripture that sealed the deal for me I gotta be honest, right? Um, Deuteronomy 28, because remember, I, said, I was in Christianity for seven years, and I used to follow along in the Bible, but the wicked pastor would read Deuteronomy 28, uh, verse one through 14, and close the book. He would always read the blessings. And I, in the back of my mind, I always ask, I wonder why he do that? And I used to read the curses, but I had no understanding of them. But when I saw Captain Joel and Captain Yan and that video break that down, I was, it was, I was, I was sold, I was, it was a wrap. It was, I was, I was, I was blown away. So when I heard the curses being broke down and hearing that Deuteronomy 7 and 6 is talking about we above all people on the face of the earth, I was, it, it just blew me, blew my mind. What makes you continue to stay with the IUIC? Fear the most high God. Fear the most high God. See, here's the thing, when you, learn about the prophecies and know who you are and the covenant that we promise and keeping the commandments and then the, con the consequence when you break the commandments <laughs> i ain't going nowhere period point blank ain't nothing else out there as a matter of fact the scripture says and uh, i don't try to break nothing down but second peter's 2 and 20. uh as you read on down it's, it's better that you have not known the truth than have known it and going astray i butcher that but yeah so the fear of the most high god definitely i'm here to do the work and i'm here motivated to see what's in store. The Most High God promised us a kingdom. I'm trying, to, I'm trying to be in the kingdom. All right, last question. Quote your favorite scripture. Favorite, man, I got a bunch of those. I got a bunch of favorite scriptures. Uh, right off the top, and I might butcher some of them. Uh, I like Joshua chapter one and eight. Uh, it says, uh, every other sole of your foot tread upon that I have given unto you, as I said unto Moses. And as you read down, it says study. No, it says meditate therein day and night. I like that. Then it's another one that says, uh, uh, greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. I think that's in uh, third John. And then of course the one Christ said, the mighty works that I do, also those mighty works you can do. That, that scripture right there, Christ letting us know that we can do the mighty works that he did, I was gone. I heard that, I'm like, so we gonna have, one day we want spiritual power. That's what he was saying, so. Favorite scriptures. And some of the scriptures that I, I meditate on a day-to-day -day basis, which is some of my favorite, is uh, 
swift to hear, slow to speak, you know, slow to wrath, slow to anger. Those are the scriptures that keep me out of trouble. Because people can take you there and make you want to debate or lash out. I just meditate, let them talk. I just let them talk. And then while they talking, I'm swift to hear, slow to speak, slow to wrath. That's me. That's pretty much it. Daniel of Israel United in Christ. Please subscribe to our YouTube channels. Stay up to date with our latest events, music, and classroom lessons. IUIC plans to continue visiting different countries where this gospel has not been preached before. IUIC needs your help in pushing this truth. So join us, subscribe to our Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, and podcasts, and stay up to date with us. For more information, please visit www.israelunite.org.